My name is Matthew Kilty. I'm a journalist, radio reporter, living in New York City. Three years ago, I was just like trolling the internet, just looking for a story. And somehow came across uh, an article from like 2001 that talked about how we were burying all of our nuclear waste in this place in New Mexico, out in the desert of New Mexico, and that we were gonna bury it like a mile or a mile and a half underneath, in the ground, underneath the Earth's surface. And how there was this problem that this posed because this stuff is radioactive for hundreds of thousands of years. And how if they put this stuff, which could potentially be harmful to humans, if they put it underground, they would eventually have to create some sort of message that says, oh, we got some stuff here that might harm you if you ever came across it. And it turns out that like actually coming up with a message that they could then put on top of this landfill, making it last as long as they needed it to, turns out it's like really, really hard. And so I just started reading this article and I became really fascinated by the problem of like, how do you solve the problem of sending a message that can last 10,000 years? So I started reading as much as I could and eventually came across what was being referred to as the Raycat solution. À l'époque, il y avait un sémioticien bien connu aux États-Unis, c'est Burke, qui avait lancé cette enquête, probablement sur une sollicitation du gouvernement américain. Est-ce qu'un sémioticien qui s'intéresse aux signes, aux signaux, aux communications, au langage, est capable de répondre à un défi considérable On est en train de stocker du matériel très, très dangereux. Êtes-vous capable de construire un message qui soit capable de passer dans le temps pour signaler que ce matériel exceptionnellement dangereux a été stocké là On a beaucoup réfléchi. On a écarté toute une série, comme on fait dans les laboratoires, on a écarté toute une série de possibilités. Il y a eu un moment où les défis nous paraissaient finalement assez impossibles. Imaginez-vous, dans 10 000 ans, quelle langue va-t-on parler Et puis, c'est Françoise qui a eu l'idée du chat. En disant, mais prenons un, un animal qui a une valeur symbolique très forte dans notre culture et, et donc qui a la possibilité de durer, un peu comme chez les, les, les Égyptiens, pour qui ces chats avaient une valeur sacrée. Et voilà, ça c'était la base. Est-ce qu'on va utiliser les chats, parce qu'on a la garantie, comme un Égy... les chats égyptiens, qu'ils seraient encore là. Alors, le problème, c'est comment euh, le, le traiter. Quand j'ai came across the Raycat solution, it was, it was, uh, there was something about it, like it seemed so fantastical, um, and yet, uh, like, fundamentally, it seems like kind of, it also seems, it seems, it seems fantastical, it seems totally, uh, totally impossible. So Paolo and Francois's project was this. Uh, they would get these scientists to genetically modify these cats so that any time these cats were exposed to radiation, uh, they would change colors. And then the next step of the project was you would take these ray cats and you would make them a part of human culture. And what would happen is years and years and years and years and years would go by, and thanks to this culture that we've made, the idea of them that they signal danger will be transmitted from generation to generation. So if people come around some radioactive waste, uh, and they see a cat that shows up and it changes colors, they'll know that something harmful is buried there. Et notre projet n'a pas eu aucun succès. Euh, avant tout parce qu'il a été pris comme un projet un peu cocasse. 
et de l'autre côté, parce que, évidemment, le destinataire était CBO, qui c'est lui qui a décidé de publier l'ensemble du dossier. Et puis, parce qu'il a été publié en allemand, dans une revue allemande. Évidemment, les Français ne l'ont pas lu, et peut-être les Anglais non plus. J'ai trouvé quelque chose qui était en allemand. C'était tout like en allemand. Je pense qu'il y avait un abstract, like juste un bref paragraphe de summary de ce papier que Paolo et François ont mis out. Uh, And so I read that and like gleaned as much as I could from that. But other than that, there really wasn't anything out there. Je crois que Sebeok n'a pas pris tout ça. Il s'est, il s'est passablement euh, amusé probablement, mais il a pas tellement aimé notre proposition. Je crois qu'il a laissé tomber. Il, il voulait en effet, il voulait une réponse euh, sérieuse, utopique mais sérieuse. Et il a trouvé une autre proposition un peu cocasse. I remember the day it got published, one of my bosses came up and said, the internet's talking about you a lot today. I was like, I don't, what, do you, what do you mean? And uh, he said, well, you're doing something, something about these, uh, these cats. And um, uh, I remember I jumped online and I saw that, yeah, like the, uh, the story was getting like a bunch of comments proposing their various solutions of how they would send a message that could last that long. And then like pretty quickly I saw that like people who liked the story started making their own little images of cats that were like neon colors and stuff and they were tweeting that. And yeah, I was taken aback. Don't change color could you keep your color could you stay that pretty gray. Don't change color could you keep your color could you keep sickness away. Don't change color could you keep your color could you please cause if you do or glow your luminous eyes you're all gonna have to move. I saw tweets that were about how the story got written up in some blog. There was like a song. They ended up making a t-shirt of, uh, of, a, of a ray cat um, that supposedly glows in the dark. Uh, that cat actually, it really struck a balance between adorable cat and kind of badass sport cat, I'm now realizing. It's a really fucking cool shirt though. No, I don't know why. Don't change color, <laughs> you keep your color, you your right God said it's not right. So don't change color or flash your eyes, cause Lord knows if you do. I hope you think it's cozy in your travel case, cause it's yeah. time to move. Mais ce qui est curieux, c'est que ce que vous me dites, et ça me fait le plus grand plaisir, je vous, je vous l'avoue, c'est que ce chat est devenu un signe, comme nous avions pensé et que les signes sont faits, évidemment, pour avoir un maximum de communication possible. Donc, effectivement, euh, notre chat avait eu peut-être quelques, je ne sais pas, quelques dizaines de sémioticiens qui s'étaient peut-être amusés dans l'affaire. Et puis, du coup, les, les changements de contexte a, a fait que euh, c'est à une diffusion euh, aussi grande que j'ai, pour moi, c'était véritablement imprévu. Je n'avais jamais écouté cette chanson. Je ne connaissais pas cette... <rire> Cette, euh, ce t-shirt, je trouve ça vraiment extraordinaire. His idea got resurrected. It got put into this like story that I did and then became something that other people got to talk about and it spread and like people then started drawing the pictures that Paolo had talked about and started like making the songs that Paolo had talked about, telling the stories that Paolo talked about. But if you don't have like an actual cat that changes color when it gets exposed to radiation, then like you don't have any basis for the culture. When I heard the story of the Ray Cats, it was um, really just interesting. Just fascinating is a bit funny, but it also made a lot of sense. It was like a perfect like solution to the problem, right? I liked all of that about it. The story is really engaging and is really interesting the way that it intersects science and also art and imagination and uh, creativity. I thought about the project a lot. I became addicted to the idea. And then I decided to get more people involved and try and make it happen. The idea of like creating this this thing and actually building it and making it into reality is to, and telling people that this is possible. People want to know how to do it and they want to get involved and they want to you know be a part of that project. So the first step is to start by working with bacteria and finding 
uh, genes that are going to uh, have a change of color. There's already genes that we know about, and they actually come from jellyfish, um, because jellyfish glow in the water, and so you can actually take those genes and express them in bacteria. And then after that, you also want to have them maybe respond to radiation. Then you move up to higher organisms, um, like yeast is a little bit higher, and then also up to C. elegans, which is a small, is a nematode worm. Uh, it's about a millimeter in length. Once you have something that could conceivably work in a cat, then you might want to try and engineer a cat that has these, this set of genes that you want to try. You know, some people might think I'm a little bit crazy for trying to engage in this, but it actually has it is this much, it's a much bigger picture with this idea than just engineering a ray cat. It's about the creativity, it's about the art, it's about the science, uh, it's about the culture, it's about asking questions, it's about, uh, you know, doing something that's completely different from everything else that everyone is doing. Je n'ai jamais pensé que ça aurait pu marcher comme ça. Ça prouve que l'invention est peut-être liée à l'humour. Et ça prouve aussi que l'imagination peut contribuer à, à, à l'invention. Mais si on doit donner une solution concrète à ces problèmes de signal, que l'idée du chat est une idée excellente, pas pour qu'elle peut résoudre une question de telle difficulté, mais elle peut contribuer à solliciter l'imagination de quelqu'un qui peut inventer un système pour le faire. And then to think that like these little creatures that are out in the world, these like little feline Geiger counters, the idea that like there's stories that are told about them, that there's poems written about them, songs that are sung about them like big murals and like frescoes and stuff like that that are painted and devoted to these cats. Um, you can't help but like want to live in a world like that. It just sounds like, that sounds like a lovely, a lovely place to be. Don't change color, could you keep your color, could you stay that pretty gray? Don't change color, could you keep your color, could you keep sickness away? Don't change color, could you keep your color, could you please, cause if you do, or glow your luminous eyes, you're all gonna have to move. So don't change color, could you keep your color, could you stay that pretty gold? Don't change color, could you keep your color, could you keep you from the cold? So don't change color, could you keep your color, cause you need your kind around?